Hello everyone, it's Nintendo 110 here with my nice looking workbench now that I can record these types of videos on, so that'll be cool. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about CD players. Not just any types of CD players, but mainly the portable slash personal ones. The small ones that were meant to be small enough to fit in like a purse or, you know, just in hand pretty much. Which I do have some of the larger ones as well, the boombox type CD players, and I'll talk about them on a later video. I do actually plan on making videos on some of my other 90s and 2000s tech as well, such as some of the Palm Pilots and other PDAs that I have, uh, of course other CD players I have, gaming consoles and stuff like that. So stay tuned to my channel if you're interested in that kind of thing, and I, you know, plan on posting more of that kind of thing. And of course, as always, robotic pets, especially the ones from the Y2K era, I will always post videos about those. And if you're into robots, definitely check out the videos I've made about those. Check out the one Zerua 635, which is my boyfriend that I live with and will be linked in the description. Check out his videos, of course, and check out any other videos that I've made on robotic pets and our collection of them. Definitely love them. Check out our robotics group, Lots of Bots, on Facebook as well. Anyways, enough rambling, let's get on to the subject of the video. And this beauty here is the Discman D151 by Sony, of course. It's from 1997, has really good bass for its era, works like a charm still to this day, despite being practically 25 years old now. And here are some more Discmans. This is the Discman D191 from July of 1999, I believe. No, June of 1999. Same uh, month that the ERS 110 IBO was released, and you can kind of tell this has some of the design inspiration, like the nice dark gray. Of course, it looks black on camera, but the dark gray borders, silver, stuff like that. Also works like a charm. Has great base for its age. Nice little LCD screen here. This is the D191 model. And its twin sister here is the Discman ESP2 DE206CK. This one is car ready, meaning that it not only has the really good mega bass that works on a car's speakers, or you know, sounds really good amplified by them, it also has astounding, astounding electronic skip protection from its era. And it originally came packaged with a converter um, where you can convert the audio coming out of it into a cassette player. These two are both kind of practically the same thing, just one, of course, has more features to it. They're both really nice looking, though. Here's another Discman ESP2 version. Uh, this is the DE451 Groove, as it calls it. This is another one from 1999, but it's from October instead of June. And the buttons and everything are quite differently shaped, but it's practically very similar to its two siblings. And then, for whatever odd reason, Sony decided to stop calling their CD players the Discman, and decided to instead start calling them the Walkman CD players. So this is the Walkman, uh, one of the Walkman CD players. It has a Track 3 Plus, meaning it can read MP3s. It also has TV, weather, and FM radio, which is, like, super awesome. Has really, really good sound quality, as most Sony ones do. And this is the DNF400. It was made in 2003, I believe. It isn't marked on here, but I've looked at eBay listings that all say it was made in 2003. Sometimes doesn't want to open up, but I promise you it will. There we go. And as you can see, as Sony went into the mid-2000s, they started making their CD players round, instead of, like, kind of weird rectangular shape. This is the CD Walkman DFJ041. It also has FM and AM radio pickup. It's like a pearly white color, kind of like the ERS-7 IBO in a way. As you can tell, if the camera will ever focus, and it probably won't. Of course, this is another one that does its job really well. Has really, really good anti-skip protection. Really good bass. 
And did I already mention what the model is? Yes, I did. The FJ-041. Or DFJ-041. I believe I already mentioned that, but I'm just going to mention it again anyway, because why not? Now that we've got a lot of the awesome Sony ones out of the way, let's go on to the Walmart brand, or one of the Walmart brands, Linux Sound. This one has that weird rubbery substance going on that melts eventually and causes it to be really weird and sticky feeling. I hate that, but yeah. This one is from 1999. This is the Linux Sound CD78 model. And most of the Walmart brand ones are not really that great. Uh, they do get the job done. They don't have the best bass boost in the planet, obviously. But again, they get the job done if you need them on a budget. And in general, they're not that bad, truthfully. Walmart eventually changed the brand name of Linux to DuraBrand. And on the back here, it should say something about, yes, okay, it does say it. Linux Electronics Corporation. This is the model CD50 from September of 2004. It's actually pretty good, has decent sound quality, not the best on the planet, but again, it's good if that's what you need. Gets the job done, still reads CDs. Works like a charm. Has a missing battery compartment, but you know, it's from Goodwill, so what would one expect? Most of the ones I get here are from Goodwill, of course. And while we're on the Dura brand train, let's talk about these guys. We've got red and blue here. There we go. They don't open up that well, but they do work pretty decently. I really don't like the buttons. They are super cheapy feeling. Sometimes they don't want to press down properly. This is the model... CD-556, or no, excuse me, CD-566, from November of 2006, but I believe these were also distributed in 2005, because I have a third one that is my little sister's that I'm giving to her soon, after fixing up, and it is a 2005 model. Both of these do say 2006, though, so I guess hers is a little bit older. And again, there's that Linux electronics, so basically all kind of made by the same company, just changed name, I guess. Next up, we've got two twins here, both DuraBrand models from 2004. Wait, that one's all scratched up at the bottom. Let's use this one instead. That is the model CD565, May 2004. Once again, there's Linux Electronics on there. One of these works, one doesn't. I couldn't tell you which one because I haven't tested these in a little while. They do pretty good for what they're worth. Not really any major problems with them besides the fact one doesn't work, but that's kind of to be expected with CD players sometimes. And next up we've got another Dura brand in a pretty cybery blue color. This one unfortunately does not work. It will read the disc, but eventually nothing really shows up on the display. It just tells you that there's an error does look nice, though. This one is from May of 2005. It's the model CD857. Now we're on to another brand. Let's talk about Memorex. I don't really know what company distributed Memorex. I feel like it may have been Kmart or Target or something. I don't think it was Walmart, but I could be wrong. I've got a larger boombox for Memorex as well. This one right here being from 1997. It is the model MD3015, I believe that says. Can't really tell very well on camera because the poor thing is like super messed up, but this one works pretty well for what it's worth. Um, it doesn't open properly. It sounds like it's breaking, but I swear it's actually not. It's just messed up spring. Here's another Memorex. This one is, I believe, from 2008. Really, really love the details to it of these little fake screws here. Just love that. It reeks of the 2000s, and I just, again, I love that. I, it's awesome. Can't really see them super well on camera. This is the model MD641BLK. Pretty sure that BLK at the end stands for black. 
And yes, Memorex is owned by Imation, if that's the brand you've ever heard of. December 2008. Oh yeah. Wait, I did already say the model number, so never mind. This one is pretty awesome. It sounds good. It was a gift from a friend in my robotics group. And, in general, it gets the job done really well, and in style. Talking about getting the job done well and in style, this beautiful Philips CD player in clear blue, chrome, and silver, which is literally my three favorite things mixed together, so you know I love it. This one's from 1999, um, but unfortunately there's nothing written on the back anymore because that all came scraped off. However, I know it's from 1999 because all the ones I've seen on eBay still have the year, and it does say 1999. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really tell you exactly what model number this is. I know I've seen the model number before on the internet, but this one is unfortunately pretty messed up. Like, not messed up, but this is all messed up. So I don't really remember, and I can't tell you right this second while I'm holding the camera. Again, this one does pretty good. Has that electronic skip protection has that good base to it, and looks absolutely beautiful to boot. So, I mean, what else could you ask for? Talking about looking beautiful, my oh my, Panasonic got the memo. Look at that, it's literally the Google Chrome logo, or at least the original one if anyone still remembers that. And with no buttons or levers or latches around the edges, you're probably wondering, how in the absolute heck does this thing open? Well, as any forward-thinking, futuristic company would reckon... That is how it opens. Yes, this thing straight up reminds me of the ERS-220 IBO if it was a CD player. If anyone knows what I'm talking about. This one is capable of reading MP3. It has really, really awesome bass, really, really awesome skip protection, and I love how the buttons actually are a part of the design. They're kind of embedded in it. They have a nice feel to them when you press them down. And I mean, come on, it just looks great. What's not to love, you know? This is the SLSW967V by Panasonic. And here's another player by Iowa, where I say, what's not to love? It's completely waterproof, locks, has the battery compartment in here so it can remain waterproof. And yes, we've tested the waterproof and it works like a charm. Has nice feeling buttons, really cute design to it, looks very Y2K-esque, and would you look at that, it's from 1999, so it's definitely Y2K-esque. And this is the model XP SP90. It has absolutely beautiful uh, base to it, pretty good anti-skip as well. I mean, again, what's not to love? Next up we've got this Sylvania. Uh, this one I believe... Was this one the one that was a gift from a friend, or was it the Memorex that I showed? I believe the Memorex I showed earlier was a gift from a friend. Yeah, that's right. This one was found at a thrift shop locally. This one is from 2013. It is the Sylvania SCD300DG. DG makes me wonder if this was sold in Dollar General um, originally. I don't remember for sure. Don't remember who sold Sylvania. But I know it was kind of a generic-ish brand, but not a bad, bad generic-ish brand, if that makes sense. Not the dirt crappy ones like you're going to see in a little bit. This one reads okay. Gets the job done. No problem with it, really. Kind of basic, but hey, if it's what you need, it's what you need, you know? No complaints with it whatsoever. Now here is the oldest CD player that I currently own. It is by Fisher Electronics, which is now defunct completely. You can barely even really see the logo, because my camera hates picking it up. This is from 1994, and it is the Fisher PCD-60B. I'm guessing that B at the end stands for black, because that's the color it is. Looks really nice, gets the job done, and despite its age, again, it still works, which is always a good thing. Actually, correction, I was confusing this one with another one. Uh, this one does not still work. Because in the battery compartment, it has some of that lovely blue crispy corrosion that everybody absolutely hates, and I absolutely hate it as well. Most of these were secondhand. We can't really help the circumstances of whatever happened to it in the past. It's still nice to have as a collector's piece, and we'll eventually replace those contacts so I can have it in action again. 
Now this is a Kobe, which sounds suspiciously similar to Sony. And it has a little bit of... Sorry, I accidentally stopped the camera a little bit too fast there. It's got a little bit of something something going on here. No idea what happened there. Looks like the paint's just been completely scratched off on the poor thing. Really like its shape. To quote Ashens, Wonderful sound, strange shape. This one actually reads pretty well, does what it's supposed to do. It's the CXCD116 model, and it was owned by Spongebob's pet, uh, snail, apparently. And it's from March of 2002. And even though the brand name Kobe sounds suspiciously like Sony, apparently it's a word actually based on the word cowboy. And I also love this little window here, reminds me of some of the Sony ones. And here we've got one from the brand ESA, which apparently was distributed originally by Circuit City. It was kind of their brand name, like how most other companies had their electronics brand names back in the day, and some still do. This is the model PCD391K. Has good skip protection, good base. Does what it's supposed to do. Actually, it does a little more than it's supposed to do, because again, it has actually some pretty good base to it. And it's from 2004. So even though Circuit City doesn't exist anymore, this can live on in its favor. In remembrance. And now we're on to the dirt cheap aisle. This one has um, FM radio, which is actually pretty nice. But this one is from Roses, which is a discount store. Um, not sure if they exist in your area. Probably there's a discount store of another name that also carries GPX in your area, because that seems to be the cheapo brand name that's going on right now. This one really isn't that bad. If you need something on a budget, it's only like 15 bucks, it gets the job done. And again, it has the FM radio, so the CD reading in it isn't really the greatest. The electronic skip is not the greatest. The bass boost is definitely not the greatest, but it gets the job done. This is the model PC. 332B RS, but no, it's not a Robo Sapien, so I'm not sure where it gets that from. Not too bad for what it is. And here we've got a Jensen CD player, which was originally ordered from Finger Hut for my little sister and got broken super quickly because of the fact it's super fragile and super crappy plastic. As you can see, the silver down here has had to be glued in some areas. The hinge does not work properly. Um, this is the Jensen model CD60, and it's from 2019. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. And it's by Spectra Mer Merchandising, the same company that makes the Studebaker CD players now, and that's one that I would really like to get because it looks very Atomic 1950s style. And that'll be for a future video. And last but also least, we have Naxa NPC319, which is just as dumb as an NPC as the name suggests. I mean, I'm not trying to hate on it. It's a nice brand from a discount store, uh, Roses and other discount stores. I mean, no, it's not really a nice brand because it's dirt cheap. But, I mean, I guess, again, this is another case of it gets the job done on a budget. However, this is like the absolute worst on the planet. It feels cheap, flimsy, plasticky. And even this little piece right here has come out twice and had to be re-glued twice, so that's always fun. The buttons just feel absolutely horrifying. And it also knocked off a certain design aspect from some of the other ones I have. As we can see, having a painted blue ring around the edge really seems to be a design choice for a lot of companies. But as we all know, Naxa was definitely not the first to do it. And last but not least, we have... Wait a minute, that's not a CD player? Why is this in here? Well, there's a disc cleaning system, and it's shaped like a CD player, but... By the way, it doesn't really do what it says it's supposed to do. Guess I should have listened to Ashens and never bought this. But regrets have been made, CDs were not cleaned, and now it's up to the library I work at to do that kind of thing sometimes. Or, you know, video rental places that don't exist anymore. Yeah. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hopefully me rambling on for 20-something minutes about CD players is not uh, putting you to sleep, and if so, I'm sorry about that, and sweet dreams. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again over on Nintendo 110.
have a great day.